Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from City Tranquility. Welcome to the first of hopefully many different video themes centering around album cover art. So initially what I wanted to do is I was going to kind of show off and talk about my top 20 or 25 favorite album covers of all time. I decided to kind of let that wait a little bit. I want that to simmer a little bit. Instead, what I've decided to do is pick out some artists who worked on a lot of album covers uh, as well as some like kind of studios that did album covers as well, kind of like the hypnosis thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bunch of those first and pick out some of my favorites uh, that all those folks worked on, and then I'm going to give you my favorite album covers of all time. So today, what better way to kick it off, right, with one of my favorite uh, artists for album covers of all time, Mr. Roger Dean. All right, if you're a fan of progressive rock music and bands, Obviously, he has put his stamp on so many albums over the years. He's done other things other than prog rock, which I'm going to dive into a few of them here. This is not all-inclusive, okay? I own a lot more uh, albums that he has worked on, but these are like some of my favorites, right? Didn't want to just pull every single one of them. Um, there's a couple, one in particular that I wanted to show because I love the album cover, but I can't fucking find the CD anywhere. It's really bad when you've got like all of your CDs like alphabetized and yet the one that you're looking for that you know is supposed to be sitting in a specific slot and it's nowhere to be found. All right, so I'm in a bit of a panic about this one because I know I've, I've had it for years. I'm talking about Badger, One Live Badger. I love the album cover art on there that Roger did, but I can't find it anywhere. So that's in this list. I'm just not going to show it to you today. Uh, I'm going to leave Yes for Last. Uh, and I'm going to dive into some of the other odds and ends here that we got. So let me, I'll start it all off with, uh, this is an album by a band called Paladin. It's called Charge. Look at that. Now, I want to uh, bring these up nice and close, hopefully not get a ton of glare. All right. And if we kind of, um, let's take the booklet out because I want you to see the kind of whole, the whole piece there. All right. That's pretty damn cool. All right. The album itself is pretty decent, not fantastic, not really a prog band, kind of proggy, a little bit more of like just kind of like a hard rock act, all right, with a little bit of psych going on in there. But that is a fantastic album cover, in my opinion. And again, I'm showing CDs. We're talking albums, all right? Album is the recording, in my opinion. The format is vinyl, CD, tape, A track, download, all that kind of nonsense. So I'm going to be showing you CDs today for all of you who are going to be like, it's favorite album covers and he's showing CDs. Yeah, that's what I own. I own CDs, all right? But we're going to show you the album cover artwork, okay? It's just in CD format. So one of my favorites. I dig this one quite a bit. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here I can show you with this one. That's basically it. But very, very cool. I dig that. Again, the album's cool, but it's uh, the artwork. The artwork is what always drove me to that. Uh, here are two from a very obviously not a prog band at all, a kind of African music band. Okay, um, who use like kind of Latin and African rhythms and create this really cool sound. Really interesting band. I have a whole bunch of their stuff. Uh, Osabisa. Okay, here is their debut. And again, let's do these one at a time. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take it. Um, oh. There, there it is right there. Let me just pop it out of the out of the tray so we can get a better look at it. You can kind of see the whole thing here. And you know, Roger did the uh, kind of the logo there, right? The little icon. Very, very cool. I like that. I like the next one even better, which we're going to get to in a second. Uh, Woyaya, Woyaya, I think is how they say it. I believe this is their second album. Love that. All right, and let's see if we can get you the whole picture. Well, you know what? The booklet's not going to show up, but there's the back. Okay. Very, very cool. Again, if you like, if you like, kind of like early Santana. Throw in some like kind of like African rhythms and things, and that's kind of what Osibisa are like. They're kind of like the African version of Santana. Really interesting music. I dig it a lot. Uh, what else? All right. One of my favorite Roger Dean covers of all time, because it's also one of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, how about Gentle Giant Octopus? Again, got to get the whole picture. I mean, this is, I, I even own this on a shirt. 
I have a t-shirt of this. I just absolutely love that. So if you're if you've been a follower of Gentle Giant, you know that they had a a UK album cover and they had one a different one here in the US. So here was the US one, which is pretty cool, I think, but not when compared to Roger Dean and ain't <laughs> so look at that look at that big monstrosity right coming out of the ocean oh fantastic love it i would love to have that poster I, in fact i actually i met roger on a, a few occasions and i have always told him that gentle giant is one of my favorite <clears throat> drawings of his and in fact i ran into roger last summer when I saw Yes at Bethel Woods, and he was actually, he was outside, and he was uh, signing prints and things like that, and I hadn't seen him in like probably a decade at least, and I walked up to Roger, and I was like, hey Roger, I'm not sure if you remember me, uh, it's Pete from Sea Tranquility, we've met a couple times at Nearfest, and I happened to be wearing my Gentle Giant Octopus shirt, not even knowing that he was going to be there, and he goes, he goes, I love your shirt, that's one of my favorite drawings that I ever did, I'm like like minds think alike right all right what else we got here how about gravy train staircase to the day look at that gravy train a very cool british kind of like hard rock psych and prog band very cool album kind of bluesy too let's see if we can get the full effect of this yes we can look at that pretty cool a little, little bit of wasted space here i think but uh still very very cool nice art from roger on that what else we got can't do this without doing some uh, Greenslade, Dave Greenslade stuff. Here we go. Let's do the first album first, right? Uh, this is the self-titled Greenslade album. Love this. That's fantastic. Kind of spooky looking, right? Let's take it out of the uh, out of the case and give you the whole full effect. Hopefully without glare. There we go. Look at that. Primo. Dig that a lot. Okay. In addition to that, uh, how about the Dave Greenslade Cactus Choir album? All right, that's probably even more spectacular. You got the same kind of creepy guy sitting on a rock, right, with the cool uh, little island behind him. I mean, that that is just awesome. Look at that shit, right? Such just different stuff, you know? I mean, he was like nobody else. And I know that there have been guys who have popped up over the years who have tried to kind of mimic the Roger Dean style, but nobody quite does it like him. You know what else I forgot to pull out? The Ad Infinitum album that he worked on back in the 90s. That's very cool, too, if you haven't seen that. A very uh, look, kind of one-and-done band, U.S. band. Uh, I have that somewhere. I should have pulled that out. All right, here's a one uh, from a band called Gun, and this is a, a two-on-one, so you're going to get both that and another cover. Just look at the one over here. So that's actually Roger right there doing that. Gun was actually this little trio that included the Gervitz brothers, who, of course, later went on to play with... Uh, uh, Ginger Baker <laughs> drew a blank there. Gervitz Baker Army. So this kind of like you know again this is uh, I wish we had something a little better so you can actually see all the little nuances there. But that's Roger as well. Um, Paul and Adrian Gervitz on bass and guitars, and Lewis Farrell on drums. Cool early early hard rock stuff. I highly recommend those albums. All right, what else we got here? How about Asia? All right, I mean this is a classic. I absolutely adore the first Asia album artwork. I've, I've actually owned a framed poster of this signed by the man himself, which I got at Nearfest many, many years ago. I actually need, you know what, I need to put that up somewhere. It's sitting in my garage. I need to get that up on a wall. I don't have a lot of wall space in here that's free, but I need to, that. I mean, that is just absolutely spectacular. What I like so much about this is that it was just so different from any other, I mean, did he ever do like kind of like a sea monster, sea serpent type of thing? Not really. Uh, he didn't do a ton of like creatures like that. He was more into kind of like, you know, locations and landscapes and things like that. Uh, here we've got the follow up Alpha, also a pretty cool album cover art there. A little bit softer with the blue colors. I always dug it though. I may not love the album, the album's decent. Not compared to we're here. We're not talking about the albums here, right? We're talking about the, the artwork. Look at, I mean, it's just gorgeous. And again, love the use of blue. This is a very soft looking piece of art here. But look at all these cool trees and steeples and little futuristic buildings. And you got the birds and what have you. Very, very cool. 
from the uh, adventurous mind of a genius, you know. All right, how about Uriah Heep? Right, worked on a couple albums for the Heapsters. Let's go all the way back to uh, Demons and Wizards. All right, this is early '70s. Very cool. Let's get you the whole. Look at that. Very neat. A little darker, right? So this Demons and Wizards, I think he did a really good job here of kind of conveying the whole, you know, kind of more darker themes of the title of the album. Okay, you got the wizard over here and all sorts of who knows what's lurking in the depths of those caverns and caves, right? Pretty neat. He would come back and work with the band yet again on the magician's birthday. All right. Again, totally different color scheme here. All right, let's take a look at this. Pretty neat, right? I like the use of the blue and the red. Got this kind of like cat creature, you know, running across. This dude here, dude up there, you know, very, very cool. Nice use of colors. He would work with Uriah Heap yet again a couple times. Uh, the only other one I'm going to show you is the uh, the Sea of Light album, which was, uh, God, what year was this? This was in the late 90s. Quite dig this a lot. This, in a way, is kind of similar to some of the Yes covers he did with the band. It actually doesn't continue there. But again, look at those kind of floating rocks with the trees growing on top of the clouds, the water. Got a really cool logo for the band on there. Good album, too, by the way. Uh, what else we got? All right, so now let's get into all the Yes related stuff. So, um, how about the Steve Howe album? Okay. Again, you got those, the rocks in the water. What are those rocks on top of? We don't know. Are they floating on air? Perhaps, because if you look at the whole thing, all right, that's kind of what it looks like, right? Very interesting. Water over here, air over here. You got a little bridge. Very cool, very imaginative. Uh, gotta love the logo, Steve's logo up top. Very, very cool. What else? How about John Anderson, Elias of Sun Hill, right? Always dug that. Never sure what the hell it is, but who cares? It's cool looking, right? Let's get the whole picture here. And not only did he, you know, it's kind of like a book, right? Very cool. Not only that, but the inside also had some follow-up artwork. Look at this. That's spectacular right there. Classic, classic Roger Dean. What else we got? How about Anderson, Wakeman, Bruford, Howe, right? You got the iconic... Look at that. That's quite good. All right. And then the, uh, the live album, which is uh, an evening of Yes Music, plus, <clears throat> look at that. Again, all these kind of floating rocks with the trees on them. Right, just, and, you know, his relationship with Yes over the years, I mean, they, he would just work on all sorts of stuff for their, their album, CD releases, the stage setup, all that kind of stuff. I mean, look at this, how cool that is. You know, Rod, you know, Roger Dean and Yes are kind of, it's like they belong together. All right, now let's get to Yes proper here. So, all right, I got it stacked more recently. Let's go, let's go all the way back. So, uh, the Fragile album, obviously. Okay. Not one of my favorites, but I do dig it. It's iconic. Okay. I just, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, I never took to the Fragile artwork as much as some of the other ones. But it is, obviously... Quite famous, quite unique. Okay. So you got this planet where things are growing pretty large on there, or is the planet really small? Don't know. Pretty cool nonetheless. All right, yes, songs, obviously. You know, let's just get Roger Dean everywhere here. Get the damn booklet out. What else we got here? Well, yeah, you got to show this, right? Got to show that. Gorgeous stuff. Ugh. And this this might be my favorite Roger Dean piece. Or it's a top three for me. Look at that. 
tell me you don't want to have that frame sitting on your wall, right? Look at that. You, know, you got the, the, the deer, the reindeer over here, and again, the kind of like floating rock formations of trees on top. So good at drawing this type of stuff. This one's just kind of moody, atmospheric looking. Uh, you know, this, this, this live album came with all sorts of great stuff from Mr. Dean. Okay, touching on all sorts of different themes and uh, very, very cool. And of course, you know, we're looking at CDs here, but if you had the LPs, you know, I used to have the LP of this back in the day. You're looking, you know, opening this up and like, whoa, look at that. All right, uh, of course, another one of my favorites. Tales from Topographic Oceans. I had a t-shirt of this all throughout the 90s, which uh, or late 80s or into the 90s, which I wore so much that it just kind of fell apart. Uh, just absolutely love this. Let's kind of take this out of the box and show this in its entirety. Look at that. Beautiful. And again, a, a great example of how Roger and Yes work so closely together because this artwork, again, kind of gives you some insight into the music contained within the album, you know, a concept album, obviously. Let's see, there you got the billboard with more help from Roger Dean, right? I'm telling you, these guys, they work so closely together. It was a great relationship that they've had all these years. All right. How about Relayer, for crying out loud? I love Relayer. There's another, and again, different colors on this, right? So here you got more, all these whites and, and sandy colors, you know, the, the rocks and the snake. Okay, the horses people over here, very, very cool. All right. Just some fantastic, fantastic stuff, these fantasy worlds that uh, Roger helped create. Uh, yes, shows. Another very cool. I actually have a hoodie with this on the front. Love it. I love this bird. I mean, just kind of very majestic looking. Let's get the whole, the whole picture here. Come on out of there, you. There we go. All right, gorgeous. Look at those use of colors, right? Just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. His attention to detail, you know, like there, you, you, it's arguable you could say some of the older things that he worked on, the non-Yes albums, some of them are more detailed than others, but almost everything that he worked on with Yes, I mean, just so full and vibrant. And just the great attention to detail. Every little space filled with some kind of unique color or shade or texture. Uh, how about the Union album? All right. I was kind of like that, too. Say what you want about the album, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, cool artwork. What else have we got here? Not a fan of this album at all, but I love the art. The latter. I mean, when this first came out, I was like, look at that. Hopefully this album is great. Unfortunately, it was not. I know there are people out there who dig it. I do not. Uh, I'm to show you from here. Yeah, that's all that's on the inside, but I do want to show you the, uh, the back. See that? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh... Another another album cover that I dig a lot. I'm not crazy about the album. It's okay. Fly from here. One of the more recent ones. Just gorgeous. More recent. Um, Roger Dean piece. Let's get the full effect. I like the greens, right? Because we didn't see a lot of this this color on a lot of his his work prior. Pretty neat. I like the the Yes logo with the kind of blue in it and the kind of little scaly things, whatever. Pretty cool. All right. He would also do other stuff within. You know, his stamp is all over everything in here. Pretty neat. All right, what else? Got two more left, guys. Thanks for hanging in here. This is kind of fun. Okay, Heaven and Earth, another more recent one. Again, not a big fan of this album, but I dig that. That's very neat. Uh... You know, again, his, uh, it's, it's Roger Dean. Every inch of this digipack is all Roger Dean. And last but not least, we're going to go to the, uh, the progeny highlights from the progeny.
Again, all the kind of floating trees and what have you. And again, some different colors on here. You got a little pinks and greens and off yellow and orange. Oh, uh, look at that. That's pretty neat. These are some good, good live recordings from the classic lineup, of course. So there you have all sorts of pretty cool Roger Dean album covers and artwork. Right, again, it doesn't encompass all of them. I know there's some of you are going to be like, oh, well, Pete, you forgot about the album by blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I know. I didn't bring everything out. I do, I do have more, but these are some of my favorites. Okay, uh, he's done a lot more than this. I wish I had the, the Badger one to show you because that's one of my favorites. Can't find it anywhere. Ugh. So anyway, hope you dig that. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, an episode on hypnosis. We're going to do an episode on uh, Rodney Franklin. Um, a lot of some of the, the really cool metal ones. If you're if you're a fan of like uh, some uh, power and progressive metal and extreme metal, there's a bunch of guys that have done tons of really cool uh, album cover art. We're going to dig into those as well. So uh, all sorts of cool stuff. And then eventually, uh, a couple weeks down the line, I will give you uh, my top 20 or 25 favorite album covers of all time. That's going to encompass albums from a lot of these and some lesser known stuff and whatever because there's some amazing album covers. Uh, in rock music that have come out over the last 50 years. Some really, really cool ones. It's going to be tough for me to kind of whittle this down and, and figure out exactly which ones I like the best. That's why it's going to take a little longer to do that video than just picking out some highlights from some, you know, recognizable names. But anyway, it'll be fun ride along the way. So uh, this is on the web. It's www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on the mighty YouTube all the damn time. Stay tuned. We've got Black Sabbath, Worst to Best Albums, coming up today. All right, so you got plenty of stuff to dig into over the weekend here. So I'll talk to you soon, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.